Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I have a couple very interesting XRP and Ripple related stories, including some opinions from attorney John Deaton, who has just taken the SEC to task uh, for, for their claims that uh, against Ripple that they've sold XRP as an unregistered security. Completely absurd. Now, one of the arguments that, that John has made, which I've not yet covered on this channel until now, uh, is, is this idea of, holy hell, SEC, where were you allowing uh, allowing the utility fork of XRP to occur with the, the, the Spark token airdrop? Like, where were you on that? You knew that you were about to file claims against Ripple, uh, claiming that uh, XRP is today a security, yet you allowed this to occur? And so with some interesting uh, opinions, and really, fun, yeah, just wait till I run through the start. I think you're going to really enjoy this here. Um, also... Uh, it just don't forget that while uh, Ripple undoubtedly is is under this intense stress of uh, you know obviously the charges against them, uh, they have to keep running a business and they are and that's pretty cool. That's that's good news. Like they're they're you know tr 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 trucking along, right? Here's a headline from you today: Ripple's hiring director of engineering who will improve uh, XRPL. And so I'm actually going to start with this because I'm going to be kind of brief with it, and then we'll get into the real meat of, of this video, which to me is the, uh, the this thread from, from John Deaton here. It's just like everything that the SEC is doing and not doing is ridiculous. Completely effing ridiculous. You know I want to curse there, but there's children in the background somewhere. I know there are. Anyway, in spite of its legal woes, Ripple continues its hiring spree. The blockchain company is now seeking a director of engineering for its RippleX subsidiary that was formerly known as Spring. And so they, they go in to talk about how it's essentially building out the Internet of Value. Uh, they also highlight something that I've really been wanting to at least mention on this channel for almost an entire week now, which is that XRP community member Matt Hamilton, uh, who was uh, previously working at IBM, he has been hired by Ripple. And I thought this was just the coolest freaking thing, and I wanted to, to share this with you. I, w I was I was surprised. I mean, it always like the fit seems like a perfect match for a number of reasons, but uh, still, to see an XRP community member, somebody who's been in the community for years, uh, end up getting hired by Ripple, it was something. And it also just so happens to be the case that when I entered the world of crypto, which was November of 2017, I was a blank slate. I just wanted to learn as much as I could about uh, about XRP because early on I was like holy hell it was my aha moment I've shared this many times on the channel where I was like wait a minute crypto is never going away this is my aha moment when I realized that you can have businesses that otherwise are not capable of existing if you have a technologically sufficient decentralized cryptocurrency with an open market price which is XRP and it's being positioned as a bridge currency by Ripple and so I saw that and I just, I just want to keep learning and learning and learning and it's hard to figure out how like who to trust and how to put the pieces together it took me months to figure things out um, there's a bit more, I'd say the information on this, it's a bit more accessible today, but it's still a great challenge to, to get your, your head wrapped around this whole thing. If you're new to the XRP community, you totally get it. it but it, it did take me months. But Matt Hamilton was one of those people early on that uh, if I ever had a question, like I, I would ask questions from time to time. But even beyond that, I would um, always just read because I, I followed him on Twitter and I just just... I, anytime there was something from him that popped up in my thread, I made sure to read it, and I learned a ton. He's one of the people, and I'm not going to list everybody here because I'll, I always forget somebody, but there's there are a number of people that I followed very early on that really uh, helped to form my, uh, my understanding of what Ripple was doing and how XRP was being positioned as a bridge currency at that point in, in time. And so it was just neat to see that somebody that happens to have, uh, you know, I, I personally give credit to, um, is now actually employed by Ripple. I just thought it was a cool story and I wanted to share it. So there we are. But um, I'll hop into this thread now from uh, from John Deaton. Oh, wait, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I did want to read this thread here. And by the way, Matt Hamilton, um, he's got quite the technical background. Like for me, I'm always more of like a big picture type of guy that I understand like functionally, you know, as, as far as you can know with publicly available now, it's like what Ripple's business plan is as far as positioning XRP as a bridge currency, the internet of value, all that stuff. Um, Matt Hamilton happens to have a very uh, technical background. So he understands more so like the inner workings of the XRP ledger itself. And so uh, I did want to read through, it's just a few tweets here, but 
Uh, Matt Hamilton wrote the following. Next month, I'm joining Ripple on the Ripple X team. And so Ripple X, uh, formerly known as Spring, which is the development arm of Ripple. And so they're, they're helping to build out a healthy XRP ecosystem effectively. That's a primary goal anyway. But he writes... I've been interested in the XRP ledger for a number of years and excited to help build the internet of value. The ability to move value around as easily as information will be transformational uh, to business and society. For many devs, cryptocurrencies and payments are still seen as an arcane area, but there is lots of development on solutions that use the XRP ledger. More and more use cases are being built on top of this tech. The community is already large, and we're only getting started. My goal is to work with the community to help developers get up to speed and learn about the features and functionality of the XRP ledger and highlight the amazing work from existing developers. Uh, the most common reaction I get from developers is, I didn't know the XRP ledger could do that. Let's fix that. Developers, starting next month, you'll be hearing from me a lot, and I look forward to hearing from you. Comment below on what's most important slash challenging to you now. So congratulations, Matt Hamilton. Very awesome to see somebody from the XRP community that's been in the community for so many years uh, end up working at Ripple, which is, is core, happy to acknowledge it, very core to the ad adoption of XRP. Very cool stuff all around. All right, end of this now uh, from attorney John Deaton. Uh, he, he goes, watch Santiago Velez who, by the way, he's a pro Ripple guy, really sharp individual. Um, I first saw him, I guess it was beginning part of December, when uh, Raul Paul, who's a, the, one of the founders of Real Vision, uh, interviewed Santiago, because he was just, Raul Paul, he's very well known in the world of crypto, if you're not familiar with him, just Google him, but uh, he was just trying, he didn't really know anything about Ripple or XRP, and he just wanted to learn, so he had Santiago on, and they had, um, God, I can't remember how long the video was, I don't know, it was an hour, hour and a half, whatever it was, really interesting and it was neat to see Santiago's take on stuff a very well informed individual and so uh, Santiago though he ended up uh, having a, a long discussion with uh, the, uh, the the founder of Flare Networks uh, Hugo Filion and so that's what we're talking about here so and he goes watch Santiago Velez conduct this interview and you will get excited about future possibilities and see true innovation at work speaking of Flare here is a relevant SEC versus Ripple thread. During the time period that the SEC claims XRP was an unregistered security, the SEC was well aware that Flare Networks, a separate entity from Ripple, announced, promoted, and then executed a digital asset token airdrop for all XRP holders. The Flare Network CEO, Hugo Filion, stated, quote, over the next quarter, we will set out plans to trustlessly integrate XRP with Flare. Uh, this will enable smart contracts with XRP on a next generation blockchain with settlement on the XRP ledger. Flare CEO explained that this integration with XRP and the XRP ledger, quote, is called a utility fork and it's the first of its kind. Uh, Flare Networks informed the public, uh, this includes the SEC, that a digital asset called the Spark Token would be airdropped into all accounts that held XRP, assuming the exchange that each XRP holder used uh, participated in the airdrop. Flare informed the public, this includes the SEC, that each investor holding XRP would receive, uh, by airdrop, a Spark token for every XRP. Flare informed all parties that a snapshot would be taken of all XRP accounts slash wallets on December 11th slash 12th, 2020. And so the reason he wrote 11th slash 12th is because depending on where you are, were in the world, like if you're in the United, United States uh, where I live, it was actually on the 11th, but in many other parts of the world it was technically the 12th, but there was only one snapshot, just to be clear. Uh, John Deaton continues here. Uh, all the major exchanges, including Coinbase, Kraken, Uphold, Binance, etc., participated in the snapshot. Based on this promotion, new XRP accounts hit a one-year high. The SEC allowed this snapshot to take place, and XRP holders are scheduled to receive Spark tokens equal to slightly more than the number of XRP tokens held on the snapshot day. If XRP is an unregistered security... What classification does the Spark token fall under? If the SEC and Clayton actually believed XRP were illegal securities, 
why would they allow an airdrop based on those same illegal securities? They wouldn't, if they honestly believed all XRPs are securities. The, the Spark token airdrop is another example of the SEC's actions slash inactions providing a de facto declaration that the XRP we purchased are not securities. By the way, Flare's integration of XRP bringing the utility of smart contracts alone makes XRP a non-security. I love the thread. This guy, hmm, he's, he's always killing it, man. I am so thankful that we've got him as an XRP community member because there are only so many of us in the community that have law backgrounds. And I, I'm not one of them. I am no law background, period. And so it's, as far as like directionally where this is all going, I've had to lean on others, including John, just to you know help inform me and, uh, and the community. And I'm always happy to share what he um, he has to say, which is why I love making videos where I get to talk about what he's putting out there and try and just kind of amplify the voice that he's got because he's out there trying to help the XRP community, unlike the SEC, which has harmed the XRP community. So there you go. Uh, somebody named Michael Hughes responded to John and wrote, when Kraken, uh, cryptocurrency exchange Kraken, uh, announced XRP trading halt, I converted all assets held there to XRP transferred that XRP somewhere else, and rebought original assets. Took minutes, so no price slippage. Cost pennies. XRP, the fastest, cheapest, and most uh, utile security. Uh, is, that, is that what he meant, utile? I didn't notice that last time I read that. Anyway, security on Earth. Uh, I think he meant utility? Yeah, anyway. Um, John responded to that and wrote, This demonstrates that XRP is a convertible virtual currency, just as FinCEN and DOJ classified in 2015. I believe the first argument that Ripple's impressive lawyers will argue is that the SEC doesn't have standing or jurisdiction to even bring the enforcement action. Cool stuff, right? You gotta love this. I mean, like, the more you look into it, the more absurd it is this, the, the claim that XRP could possibly be a security falls flat. And so I don't know what's going to happen because I'm not some sort of legal expert, not even close, but it doesn't make logical sense to me. It really does not. So we'll just have to see what happens. I'm hoping for a settlement. Got to sit tight in the meantime, I suppose. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.